and we are back. Got something a little different for y'all this time around. We got a workout video. I've been meaning to do one of these for a while now. It just took a little minute for me to get to it. But as you can see, here we are. I'm going to put the whole workout in the description, and I'm going to put chapters in the video just to make it easier to find certain things and stuff like that. And with all that being said, let's get straight into the workout. So as you see, we're starting off with some ab rollouts with the with the ab wheel, and then I superset these with some face pulls. So lately, I've been starting pretty much all, almost all my workouts with abs first. Instead of doing them at the end like I tend to do, I push them to the top because if I do them at the end of my workout, there's a higher chance of me probably skipping them or just not going intense as I could. So I just do them at the beginning now. And this is actually my first time doing face pulls at the beginning of my workout. I usually do this like toward like the middle or the end, but I push them at the beginning because I've seen and heard that some people do them before they do any pressing movements, like any like bench press, which I'm going to be doing later. So I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and give it a try. And I actually like it. So after I finish recording this video, I got upper body again, and I'll be doing face pulls again before I do incline bench. So I think that might be something that might be sticking around for a little while. The idea behind it is really just getting those rotator cuffs in the shoulders and those rear delts and a little bit of that upper back, getting those warmed up because you you don't necessarily work them when you're doing pressing movements, but you do use them to stabilize. So I feel like getting those warmed up will only benefit and add to your pressing movements. All right, I believe this is my last set on the ab wheel. I want to say the first two sets, I got 11 reps. And then on this last set, I actually got 15. And one thing that I've learned is you really have to go based off of how you're feeling. When it comes to certain movements, certain exercises and stuff like that, like whatever rep range you're shooting for. Because honestly, my goal is to be able to get like 20, 20 clean reps with the, uh, with the ab wheel. You know what I'm saying? And I was able to get 15 coming off of that 11, you know, because I honestly, I feel like with certain movements, it's like it takes a little minute for you to kind of warm up a little bit or really get a good feel for the movement. You know, clearly for me, it took the first two sets, you know, because I was only able to get 11, but then I just kept it going and I got to 15. So basically what I'm saying is don't be afraid to push past your uh, the rep, rep range that you were shooting for. Like, if you're feeling better, if you're feeling good, go ahead and get a few extra reps in, man. It's only going to help you. And now we're moving on to the dumbbell incline press. And this is probably one of my favorite movements right now. I try to shoot for, like, six to eight. Like, this is probably one of the heavier movements in my um, – like, it's heavy, and the rep range is pretty low usually for this exercise. And as you see, I'm trying to get a really good stretch at the bottom, like just increasing that range of motion because you see a lot of people, their their arms are at like a 90 degree angle, like their um, their forearms to their bicep is like at a 90 degree angle. But I try to go like the point of doing dumbbells, in my opinion, is to go past where a barbell can go because a barbell is going to stop at your chest. But the dumbbells, it doesn't have to stop at your chest because you're not holding one bar. And another thing that I've noticed since I've been doing my dumbbell presses like that with that increased range of motion is when I do do any barbell presses, it feels so much easier because I feel like I'm doing half of the work because the bar is stopping at my chest. It feels so much easier and it feels like I can push way more weight because it's like I'm going down and I'm like, oh, I have to stop already. Like Because I'm used to going so deep with the dumbbells, it's just the dumbbell or the barbell work feels so much easier now. So I definitely recommend going a little deeper than normal with the uh, dumbbell work. And I actually learned that from Bald Omni Man. That's another guy on YouTube. I learned that from him a while ago. And he said the same thing that I just said. Like, it makes your barbell work feel so easy. Now we're moving on to the seated cable row. I actually superset these with my uh, incline press. But with the seated cable row, because this wasn't an exercise that I always like to do, but I like it more now because I understand it better. And the best thing I can tell you with really any rows, but specifically the seated cable row, is to really pull and squeeze with your back. It's almost like you want to drag 
whatever your whatever bar, whatever you're holding, it's like you want to drag it back versus just jerking it back and forth with your arms. You know, it's a roll, meaning it's hitting. It's for your back. Like, I mean, you hit your arms a little bit, but for the most part, it's a back exercise. So you have to pull with your back, which means you have to learn how to pull with your back. And another thing that I've learned is to allow your shoulders to move, because I used to think that you had to keep them in a locked position. But when you have them that way, you get a lot less out of the movement. Like you can let your shoulders kind of hang. And this is really with any rowing movement. You want to let your shoulders, like that upper back, you want it to open and close. You know what I'm saying? You see, this is the perfect angle for me to explain what I'm saying about, you know, your upper back or your whole back, really, opening and closing. This is another reason why I recommend recording yourself when you work out so you can see how your muscles are moving. You can see how your body's moving and stuff like that. Like, it'll only give you more information and insight as to how you do things and why certain things might work and why certain things might not work. Now we're moving on to these weighted dips. I'm just using one plate because I'm keeping the reps pretty high. I can do much more weight than that, but like I said, I want to keep the reps pretty high. I think I got like 11 here. And with the dips, man, I've learned to learn, really keep your form in check. Like I try to keep my head, you know, leaning forward a little bit. And when I come down, I try not to go too far past 90 degrees. I don't know. Some people say you can go past 90. Some people say stay at 90. I think I'm going a little past it, but just really make sure you're feeling the stretch and you're feeling the stretch at the bottom and the squeeze at the top. And I superset these with some standing dumbbell shrugs. I'm doing them one side at a time instead of just doing them together. Uh, this is my first time ever doing them this way, and I actually like it. Like I feel like I can get a better stretch and squeeze in the traps by doing them separate versus um, just doing them together with one bar. Like each side has to pull its own weight. I didn't record this, but what I was doing in between sets, because like I said, I was supersetting the dips and the shrugs. Once I finished the shrugs, I would grab the same plate that I was using for dips. I was grabbing it with both hands and then I was just kind of letting it pull, like letting it uh, stretch my uh, traps, like just letting them stretch them out in between sets. And that felt really good. I don't know if it was doing anything, but it felt pretty good. <laughs> now we're moving on to this pullover machine. And I'm going to be completely honest. I forgot that this machine was even in my gym. I will say one thing that I do like about this machine versus doing it with the cables is that you really can't cheat like you really can't use any momentum you have to use all your back because your back is on that um on that plate like it's not on the plate on the pad like it's supported versus when you do standing cable uh pullovers it's like you can kind of cheat a little bit because there's nothing behind you so i will say i do like that about it but i can see myself keeping this in my split for a little while it's a nice little change of pace like i said i'm, I'm used to doing standing cable pullovers but that like the momentum and like, I don't know. It's just something about it. it. It just wasn't like, it's a, it's an okay movement, but I like this style better. Like I feel more secure. I feel like I can get a better stretch. I feel like I can get a better squeeze. And honestly, if you've been working out for a while, you know that those are the two most important things that you need to be getting in your muscles to, to get any uh, growth. Now, I'm not going to sit here and try to act like the movement isn't a little awkward at first, especially with the machine. Like, you got to get your arms, like, back behind your head at first. But, like, once you get in there, you're pretty much good to go. Moving on to these cable lateral raises. So, instead of holding the little handle thing and doing my lateral raises that way, I decided to use my lifted straps and just kind of slide my wrist through there. I learned that from this guy on YouTube named... Uncommon Sense, and I think another dude, Alex Leonidas, I think they both were talking about that. Basically, it's, you're able to keep your wrist in a neutral position versus trying to bend it by holding on to one of those little handle things, and this feels much better than holding on to the handle. Also, when you're doing your lateral raises, you want to make sure that you're actually targeting the lateral delt. That's the whole point of you doing a lateral raise, but a lot of times people will end up 
hitting their traps because they're kind of shrugging the weight up and kind of like cheating a little bit. And I won't even lie. I think that's like the first couple of years of my training. I think my traps got developed because I was doing lateral raises wrong. I was cheating and like swinging the weight up and shit like that. You don't have to do all that. Just learn how to target the lateral delt. And the best way that I can tell you to do that is take your time with it and really feel the movement versus trying to sling a bunch of weight up that you probably can't actually control. Take your time, switch to the cables and and bring your arm out slowly and really feel that lateral delt working. And last but not least, we finished up with these barbell curls. I want to say that's like 75 pounds or something like that. I tried to shoot for like eight, I think like eight to 10, something like that. I can't remember how many reps I got. I have to check the notes, but um, I don't really have any like chin ups or any other bicep movements in my split at the moment. So I'm like, you know what, let me just throw these in. That's the, that's the most weight that I can put on um, the bar for bicep curls. And, you know, I think it, I just think it looks cool, you know, <laughs> doing curls with a big ass barbell. So that's what I'm doing. Right now, I'm only doing about two sets of these because this is a pretty hard movement. So for the first set, I'll kind of have like a farther apart grip, like my hands are farther out. And then on the second set, I'll bring them closer together because I think they say like when you the, your, the position of your arm hits different parts of the bicep because the bicep is not just one muscle. It's a bicep by meaning two. So I try to just alternate a little bit between those two, but I'm going to try to add in some more sets. I think what I'm going to start doing is once I finish on the last set, because I typically take the last set to failure, I'll just take all the weight off and then just curl the 45 pound bar. I'll just bang that out until I can't. And with all that being said, that is my workout for today. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know if you made it this far in the video. If you did, I appreciate that. And just let me know what y'all think about this type of content, man. I mean, I'm going to post more gym content because it's a big part of my life, but feedback is always welcome. So appreciate y'all checking me out. Leave a like. I'm going to leave all the information and stuff that y'all need in the description. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one, man. Y'all take it easy. Peace.